What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, a lot of times when I do uh, videos mentioning the passing of someone notable, oftentimes it's a, a unfortunate or sometimes even sad occasion. This isn't one of those times, all right? Um, this individual, uh, as a matter of fact, should have gotten the, you know, uh, electric chair, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the humane way they do executions now, he, that, that's too good for him. He should have gotten the electric chair and, you know, hope it was old. Uh, it should have been old school, like in Green Mile where they didn't wet the sponge. This is how much, uh, this, this is how repulsive this human being was. Okay. Um, If you're younger than I am, you probably don't know who this guy was, unless you're like uh, some type of a serial killer expert as far as like, you know, reading about them. If you're older than me, definitely 50 and older, you remember who this guy was. So Rodney Akala died in prison today. And the families of his victims, which may be as many as 100 people, are breathing a sigh of relief just to have his existence gone from this earth. So Rodney Akala, read from NBC News. So convicted serial killer Rodney Akala, known as the dating game killer because of his appearance on the TV show as a contestant in 1978, has died of natural causes, California prison officials said Saturday. Akala, 77, was condemned to death row for murdering five people, including 12-year-old Robin Samso in 1979. 12 years old. He died at 1.43 a.m. Saturday at a hospital the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation said in a statement. He was twice granted a new trial in the Orange County kidnapping and killing of Samso, but was convicted of her murder, as well as that of four women by an Orange County jury in 2010. He was sentenced to death. His other cases included 1977 deaths of 18-year-old Jill Barkham and 27-year-old Georgia Wickstead, the 1978 death of 32-year-old Charlotte Lamb, and a 1979 death of 21-year-old Jill Parenteau. In 2013, he was also sentenced to 25 years to life in prison for the 1970s murders of two young women in New York, Cornelia Crowley in 1971 and Ellen Jane Hover in 1977. He was also charged in 1978 murder of 28-year-old Christine Ruth Thornburg in Wyoming. Investigators suspect Akala and other killings in L.A., the Bay Area, Seattle, New Hampshire, and Arizona. In 2010, authorities released photos of women and girls seized from Akala and asked the public to identify any possible missing people or further victims. Police at that time said they were overwhelmed with tips. Investigators said Akala used his camera to lure his victims. He was often compared to Jeffrey Dahmer and his deception and brutality when it came to women. They both had similar tactics. They would come across as charming, uh, you know, uh, Dharma would fiend an injury so he's not harmless, have a cast on, or walk with a cane or something like he'd hurt himself, lure the woman into a vulnerable state. Both of them would do the same things, you know, then uh, lure the woman into some area where they're vulnerable and then do their thing. Alcala was especially heinous because he would not kill his victims directly, like like immediately. He would strangle them to the point of unconsciousness and then stop. Strangle, stop, strangle, stop, beat, torture. I mean, he was a horrible piece of shit, man. And uh, that's why I don't understand some people and, 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 and their fascination with trying to romanticize these, type of, these types of people, you know, make them out to be victims and all of that, you know what I'm saying? So uh, fuck him, and uh, you know what I'm saying. And if there is a hell, 
hopefully he's he's in those flames right now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, fuck this guy. <laughs>